Big shout out to G Portal for sponsoring today's video. Save 10% off on all G Portal game servers by using the link in the description below. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hey, what's up, guys? It's DJ. Welcome back to the channel. The Vermeer DLC has finally been released for all platforms. And in today's video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about how to get the DLC right now, no matter what platform you play on, what's included with the DLC, and how each piece of equipment works in the game. So let's jump right in. First, let's go over how to get the DLC. Right now, it's available for all platforms, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Series, PC, Mac, and Google Stadia, including Steam and Epic Games versions. The Vermeer DLC costs $7.99 USD by itself and is included with the year one season pass if you own that. Console players will want to go to the Microsoft Store or the PlayStation Store. Even if you have the season pass, you're still gonna need to do this step. Search for Vermeer and it should be the first thing that pops up. If you have the season pass, you just need to click download. But if you don't have the season pass, you will need to click purchase. It may also say pre-order depending on if your platform has received the update or not. Once you purchased or downloaded the DLC, it will show up in your DLC section of your game. If you guys play on PC, there's a few different ways to get your hands on the DLC. First is through the Farming Simulator website, which I highly recommend. Go to farming-simulator.com, link below, and click on DLC at the top. Scroll down to you see Vermeer and click it. From here, you could select your payment method and click purchase. If it still says pre-order for you, like it does for me, you could still purchase it and receive your code. Enter your information and of course, make sure that you use the code DJ Goham. Follow the steps after that and you will receive an email with your code. That email will tell you what to do from there. For those of you using Steam or Epic Games to play Farming Simulator 22, you basically do the same thing the console players do. Load up the games launcher, search for Vermeer, and they click Add to Cart or Purchase. And you're good. If you already have the season pass as well through those platforms, it won't let you buy another one. So you're all good from there as well. And if you play on Google Stadia, it will be available for purchase during the day today sometime. And you'll be able to add it to your game from Stadia directly. Now that you've got the DLC, let's take a look at the pieces of equipment that are coming with it. You're going to find five different pieces. The BPX 910 straw blower, ZR5 1200 self-propelled baler, 2800 twin rake, 605 in round baler, and the TM1410. And trailed mower. Customization for these pieces of equipment is pretty straightforward. For the BPX 910, well, there is none. For the ZR5 1200 self propelled baler, a little bit different. You've got rim color options between black and yellow. Uh, the yellow matches the other Vermeer stuff. However, I do prefer the black option. We do have wheel brands from Trailer Bork, Michelin, Continental, Midas, Freistein, and Nucky and Tires. We do have a standard and a wide tire for each of these with the exception of Midas, which are always wide tires, and Nookins, which are just the standard road tires. This has 200 horsepower, it's got a variable transmission, 333 liters of fuel, 29 mile per hour max speed when it's on the road, which is quick. Uh, it also weighs 8.9 tons, it's pretty heavy, 11 mile per hour max running speed, and it'll make 125, 150, and 180 centimeter round bales. As for the R2800 twin rake, this weighs two tons, 80 horsepower, 8.5 meter working width, uh, but that can be adjusted Adjusted as well. It's also got a 10 mile per hour max working speed, no customization. The round baler is basically the same as the self propelled baler, but it requires horsepower instead of has horsepower. Only 100 though, 10 mile per hour instead of 11 working speed, but the bales are the same 125, 150, and 180 centimeter. And lastly, the mower. This requires 110 horsepower, 6.3 meter working width, non adjustable. However, you can kind of like boom it left to right. It's kind of cool. And it has 13 mile per hour max working speed speed. Wheel brands include Trellebork and Vreinstein, and those are it. Just little fat chunky tires. These are some pretty awesome pieces of equipment, and as you know, grass work in the game and bailing is a lot more fun when you got friends to play with, and that's where our sponsor, G Portal, comes in. They host premium game servers for Farming Simulator 22, no matter what platform you play on, even on consoles. It's true, I did a video on it. I've been working with G Portal as a partner for the past 18 months, and they've been awesome hosting the channel member servers and public server ever since. For Farming Simulator 22, they got a few different options for players. You can do four players all the way up to 16 in your game and everything in between. You can also add an extra 25 gigabytes of mod space as well, and I highly recommend this option to anyone wanting to use mods. You can also get your server with a limit, either a three day, 30, 90, 180, or a full 365 day limit. There's nine different locations around the world to choose from where your server is hosted, and the closest to you and your friends, the better your ping will be. I have mine in Washington, DC. Once you've got everything you need, click continue and you're done. Check out my video on how to get private game
game servers for more information. And if you're interested in grabbing a game server for you and your friends, use the link at the top of the description and get 10% off right now off all G Portal game servers, even if it's not Farm Sim 22. A big shout out and thank you to G Portal for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back in the field and show what these machines can really do. Each piece of equipment's got a specific job to do, whether that is windrowing things up or maybe mowing, bailing them two bailers or even you know, doing straw for your cattle we've got quite a bit of here really nice pieces of equipment with some great animations we're gonna jump at the massey ferguson 8s right here we got the 305 so the largest engine that we could possibly get a hold of in the game just for you know help <laughs> Just in case these don't require a lot of power. So the mower, the first thing that we can do is open it up. And it has a great animation, really good sound as you can hear. And it kicks itself out to the right as default. However, if you want to move it, you actually have full individual movements on how far out you go with it. So if you want it to be way far out there, kick it out. If you want it to be right behind you, well, you can easily do that. Or all the way out to the right as well. Good to go there. By the way, another great thing about this uh, mower is you can hire a worker on it no matter what angle it's on, and that worker will do the entire job at that angle. So if you want them to be a specific, like, uh, for example, I found my way all the way up to the top of this field, so I wanna turn around, I wanna lower this down, I wanna turn it on, and I want to mow all of this with the mower on my left hand side. I just hire a worker and he'll do it for me. Makes it really nice and easy. After you've mowed whatever you wanna mow, no matter how far out the angle may be on here, you can easily fold it up. Just simply click fold, it'll recenter itself and it'll fold up nice and easy. Then you've got your wind rower. Now this thing is pretty sweet. As I mentioned, you've got an adjustable working width. So we've got all the way out to about right here or we can bring it in a little bit as well. Really, this kind of brings it in, I would say between one meter and maybe half a meter, something like that. Drop it down, we could turn it on. Do make sure that you're in the correct kind of working space. If you get it too far over here to the left side or the right side, it's not gonna pick it up. It wouldn't in real life, to be fair, but it really won't do it in the game. But you've got this, a really, really nice animation. I mean, just look. Look down at that animation right there. How beautiful is that? When you get down to the end of your row and maybe you want to change it up a little bit, maybe you realize, you know what? That was too far out. Go ahead and bring it in a little bit. Jump back in, turn it on, and then hire worker on it again and you'll be good to go. One other thing about this piece of equipment, no matter if it's all the way in or all the way out, whenever you fold it up, it's going to readjust itself to all the way out position. And then whenever you unfold, bring it back, boop it'll always start in the farthest out position. So you will need to bring it in depending on how you want to run your farm. Next is Baylor's stuff. Technically, they both do the same job, but who doesn't want a self-propelled Baylor? I mean, come on. This thing right here will do, as mentioned, 125, 150, and 180 centimeter round bales. Today, we're just gonna be making standard 150 centimeter bales. Another thing to note is whenever you turn right or left, you don't have to press the gas. It'll just do it. And whenever you need to hit the brake, just let go and it'll do it for you. Now, if I'm driving forwards, for example, so I'm here pressing the gas and then I hard turn to the left, it's gonna slow down a little bit. Same thing with the right. It's gonna take a wide turn at first until it gets slow enough and then it's gonna make that turn. If you guys are pushing forward on the gas, It'll basically turn eh, about as how you would expect it to. It's extremely maneuverable. As you can see, I'm sitting here just playing with it right now, but it's doing such a good job. This will do uh, working speeds at 11 miles per hour. So let's put that to the test. We'll drop it down. We'll turn it on. We'll go ahead and uh, set the cruise control. And we're picking up our grass right here. Another thing we could do is turn on automatic drop. We will do that so that the bale will automatically drop out after we let it go. And we've even got a bale counter at the top left-hand corner. The bale counter on the left is going to be how many you've done in this session. And then the bale counter on the right is going to be how many total bales that this specific machine has made. Again, we've got automatic bale uh, kicker outer right there. So it'll do it for us. And it'll bring it back in all at the same time. 
Jump into first person, and we get a really, really good look around here. Man, look at that. Oh, that is so cool. It is a normal baler, so all of your stuff, your uh, grass, hay, straw, things like that, this is going to do them for you. So if there's a situation where you need a baler, jump in, check it out. It's pretty cool. And again, because we've got a 29 mile per hour max speed on this thing, you can get from point A to point B very fast. And basically the same when we go for the 605N. We've got the exact same bells, 125, 150, and 180. Uh, I think for this one, we should run 125. We'll do little baby bells or, you know, small enough bells. We will go ahead and turn on the automatic drop here as well. Lower down, turn it on, and move forwards. Now this does have a max working speed. I think it's about a 10, 11 miles per hour, somewhere around there. That's about as fast as you're going to be able to get this. It does seem to have a little bit bigger of a uh, pickup than the self-propelled version. So that may be a uh, deciding factor for you when you're trying to figure out which one of these that you want to use. Jump back in, make some more bells. It's got some really cool animations, really nice belts. You can see everything in here all the gears, they're driving, doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's really cool. It's a really nice baler. It's done well. I am really excited that this is in Farming Simulator as a whole. Very cool. Oh yeah, and the bell counter. Top left, same thing there. You can also reset the bell counter, so if you want to do that, you can. However, the overall working of the baler, that number, the second one, will continue to stay there. And just for fun, let's hook up to a base game baler and see if the bell counter is there. And yes, the bell counter is there. Looks like as long as you got the Vermeer DLC, you're good to go. Last piece of equipment is really, really cool. This is the BPX 9010. What this will do is it'll bring these bell arms down and you can pick up some bells. And we've got 150 centimeter round bells right there. And let's see how I do with this. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes I make it look like it's the most difficult thing in the entire world. It's basically like having a front loader on a trailer, which is exactly what it is. So we'll try and get it lined up. It works well when when you do a good job yourself, which is exactly what I'm going to try and do here. Back in, nice and slow, and then easily bump it up just like that. And then when you flip it, it's just going to throw the bell. Yay! Just like that. I don't think there's any way I could possibly do this twice, but we're going to try. Why not? I think I've almost got it. Nice and easy. We'll kind of boom it up. There we go. Yeah! Not bad, not bad. So now we've got a bell in here. We're going to pull up next to a cow pen and simply just overdo it. There you go. Straw's going out, the animation looks really, really nice, and the cows are happy. Well, that one's not, but you know what I mean. There's another way you can overload this as well. All you gotta do is go in here and set it from straw blower to unload. Then when you force unload, it's gonna drop down and just kind of make a little pile right on the ground. It's gonna unload it really, really quickly as well. So if you wanna do it that way, you can. You can also force unload the straw blower which is kind of neat, but it does unload it just a little bit slower than the other way. It's still kind of funny. So you can force unload these if you really want to. Toss in another bell and get back to work, man. And that's it. That is everything that you need to know about the Vermeer DLC for Farming Simulator 22. If you'd like to buy the DLC on PC, buy the year one season pass, or get the game as a whole, check the description for links to all of those and make sure that you use the code DJ Goham. That goes to help support the channel at no additional cost to you. And again, thank you to G Portal for sponsoring today's video. If you have any questions at all about the new Vermeer DLC, Farming Simulator 22, or anything else, post those in the comment section and check the description for helpful links to other things you may be interested in as well. You can also find playlists for new mods and farm some news link there. That way you can stay up to date with everything new and upcoming going on in the world of Farming Simulator. With all that being said, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, drop a like, get subscribed if you're new, join the GoHam fam. Make sure those notification bells are on as well. That way you never miss daily Farming Simulator videos here on the channel. With that, hope you have a great day. We'll see you later. Peace!